Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Actually, let me lower this down a little bit. A little high there. There we go. Um, yeah, just back to post a quick video, just a recent finds video. Stuff I've picked up over the past, um, I guess, well, since the last recent finds video, as I always like to say. Um, and this could be the last recent finds video from this music room, because I'm going to be moving in a few weeks. So depending on if I get any new stuff in and blah, 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 but potentially this could be the last recent finds from this music room. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start packing up stuff probably. Well, I'll start packing like my place. I'm going to do like the bedroom first and I'm going to do the boom, boom room and the kitchen, and really kind of everything over the next couple weeks. And about three weeks from now, after everything else is packed up, that's when I'll actually pack up my music room and music stuff. And just like last time, I'm going to pretty much do a regular move for the most part myself because I don't have a ton of stuff outside of the music stuff. And then I'm going to hire a moving company just to do just my record collection. Um, box sets and stuff like that, I typically put those in like those big plastic tubs um, just with the various sizes and everything. And I'll move those myself, you know, just feel more comfortable with that. But with the 12-inch stuff, you know, the way they fit just really tight and firm into the the U-Haul small box size. Uh, not only is it a good, you know, good way to kind of pack them up, but they also, it, they're pretty well protected. Uh, you know, firm, no moving around, no no room to really move around. Um, matter of fact, during one move, I remember actually having a box that fell and, you know, no damage or anything whatsoever. So, um I'll have a moving company just moving the 12 inch stuff and I'll have a close eye on them while they do it. But, uh, yeah, so it, it'll be a lot of work, but interesting, but definitely excited about putting together the, the new music room. But anyway, um, uh, new finds here, a uh, new band that I was introduced to, which is kind of cool. A few CDs, but still been in the process of putting stuff into my discogs. And I'm actually, as of this morning, up to, like 3,554 pieces. So moving right along. Um, yeah, so that's that's definitely been been kind of good. So I've also started to sell on Discogs, which I never really did before. I pretty much kind of sold kind of exclusively on eBay. So uh, that's been going pretty good as well. And yes, it's worked out really well because I was looking at this stack of recent finds. I don't think I actually came out of pocket to spend a dollar for any of this. It's just been credit from working at the shop and sales on Discog. So it's been a, a good recent finds month in that regard, which is always great. So let me just kind of dive in and show you some of the stuff that I've, I've picked up. Uh, gonna start off with a few CDs too, because I don't show those as often, but sometimes I get some stuff that I really kind of like. And I did pick up this Santana, this MoFi copy. and. And it just hit me like a few week, couple weeks ago, you know, working at the shop, I pretty much can order anything from the distributors that I, I like. And I thought, why in the hell am I not getting like this MoFi stuff, like the stuff I normally wouldn't go out and buy because you know how MoFi stuff is. But it's like, I'm always building up all this credit that's just sitting there. Start getting the freaking MoFi stuff. So you'll definitely be seeing a lot more of that coming in for me as far as stuff from the shop. Uh, MoFi CDs and LPs. So that's Santana, of course, the classic everyone knows there. Also picked up uh, Breakfast in America, Super Tramp there. And then also this really cool copy of Vanilla Fudge. You know, classic album. Um, you know, yeah, again, you guys know that album inside now, so I don't say anything about that. But those are three of the MoFi CDs that I picked up. And then a few deluxe CDs as well, which was Slipknot. Again, another classic album. They're probably my favorite album by them overall. Uh, it does have Cycle Social on it, which is one of my favorite songs by them, or one of the first songs that got me into them, I should say. And then a nice deluxe version of Lionel Richie, Can't Slow Down. Again, one of those 80s albums that people can kind of, you know, throw off to the cheese and all of that, but th this was a freaking slamming, gigantic album for Lionel Richie. 
In fact, the only bad thing really about this album is the fact that it came out like at the same time that Thriller did, and it was kind of battling the charts with Michael Jackson with all the stuff from Thriller. I mean, I can't imagine if this would have had just a couple of years by itself on the charts or something of that nature, because this was huge. Um, you know, All Night Long, Penny Lover, Stuck on You, um, Running with the Night, Hello. I mean, just some of his absolute biggest hits on that album. So, so happy to find the uh, a nice copy of the Deluxe Edition. Anthrax, State of Euphoria. Another nice Deluxe CD there. So that was a cool find. And Little Bad Brains. That's my boys right there. Fantastic album. All their albums are fantastic. And just kind of on the random one that I just decided to show out of the group of CDs I picked up, Tracy Clark, Fearless, just a country album I've always kind of liked and finally got a chance to get it on CD. Not to mention I've always had the biggest crush on her anyway, so I had to show that one as well. But uh, moving right along, now we'll go into the vinyl. Uh, this is the, the new group that I discovered. Um... They've been out for, I guess, a few years now, so I'm sure a lot of you have known them for a while, but I just didn't. And it is Krung, 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 or I don't know if it's Krung or Kroon, Ben, but um, yeah, just a really, really cool three-piece. Um, again, I just discovered them. I guess this album that just, just came out, um, I was at another record store, and uh, the guy was just kind of playing it, and I was like, Hmm, never heard of them. Who's that? And he was, you know, kind of told me about them. And then there was two other people in there. They're like, oh, yeah, they're fantastic. Oh, yeah. They're... I was like, well, crap, I guess I better check them out. So then when I went into to work at the shop the next day, uh, we had three different copies that had just come in. So I'm like, perfect. So I ended up grabbing those. But I guess this is the, the new one. Um, really cool kind of three piece. It's kind of a nice mixture between... Um, there's like a, a Latino flavor to it. There's a bit of a sunk soul flavor to it. Uh, from a, a, a ringing vibe guitar feel, there's kind of a, a light Hendrix feel to some of the playing. I mean, so it really is kind of just a, this really cool mixture of so many things coming together. And uh, the bass player, I think is her name. Again, I'm just learning about the group. I think it's Laura, Laura Lee, I believe is the bass player's name. Reminds me a, a lot of Tina from um, from the Talking Heads. Um, just kind of like her bass just really kind of drives and, and holds things together, if you will. And um, it seems like the drummer and the guitar player are kind of playing around her lead, like she's the main rhythm section, so to speak. But uh, interesting stuff. And again, I'm just learning about them, so... Uh, I have to kind of catch up to you guys here in the V6. I'm sure you guys know them all too well. But that was a very cool pickup. And I also picked up this one by them. The end dub, which is I guess kind of a dub mixes from one of their other albums there. I actually haven't listened to that one yet. But I did listen to this one. Which is also a really, really great pickup as well. And so far, this one has been my favorite. I really like this one a lot. So I guess kind of on the newer one, there's a bit more vocal, and this is kind of more instrumental for the most part. But um, yeah, again, brand new band to me and really digging it. So that's always great to be able to, to discover something new. A nice piece I've been looking for forever and just finally found a copy in great condition, which is Al Stewart, The Year of the Cat. I mean, not an expensive album. I just haven't been able to find one in perfect condition that I could just pay a few bucks for. So found this one for only six bucks and was able to grab that. Uh, again, fun kind of album. My favorite song off of is definitely the title track, Year of the Cat. Just has like a really kind of cool 70s slash almost kind of funky groove to it. It's just a very interesting track, but great to pick that up. This was kind of a, oh, what the hell pickup. <laughs> My credit was kind of stacking up. So I decided to go ahead and pick up this copy of a Black Sabbath Paranoid. And this is a 2LP Deluxe Edition, 
which has the second LP that has stuff like um, uh, an instrumental track of War Pigs and an alternative take of Paranoia and some other instrumentals of, of uh, songs from the studio albums, just kind of some bonus material. And um, again, I just kind of saw it sitting there and I was like, ah, what the heck? Got some credit to blow, might as well. Um, and this is one with kind of various artists. Uh, what am I looking at here? Oh, yeah. This is kind of a really neat compilation. Um, again, just one of those ear dropping things that I heard and ended up picking it up. But it, it's basically, as you can see by the, the hype sticker there, uh, in Indonesian hard, psychedelic, progressive, and funk from 1970 to 1978. And it's just that, like, you know, Indonesian bands that are doing the psychedelic and just all, all that kind of, you know, soul funk and just really, really interesting stuff. Um, really even kind of hard to describe. So uh, if you haven't heard this, you know, maybe definitely kind of check it out, especially if you're kind of a psych fan. Uh, some very, very interesting stuff there. Next, finally found this copy of Paco Legend. I've been wanting a MoFi pressing of this for a while, but was never willing to pay MoFi money for it because I didn't want it that bad. I just wanted a MoFi pressing, but I uh, stumbled across this one the other day, and so that was a nice pickup as well. Of course, it has my favorite song by them on it, which is Spellbound. Really, really cool album. And... This was a nice stumble upon as well, except Death Row. Just one of the two final pieces I needed for my my Accept studio album completion. Um, this one was kind of tough, to, not tough to find, but it was a bit more expensive online because I guess they're out of print. And I tried ordering some through the store and that's when I actually found out they were out of print, I guess. But uh, just walking through another store this past weekend and boom, it was just sitting there. I'm like, holy cow just out of nowhere so music on vinyl pressing it is on red vinyl which again is kind of blah blah but you know just very happy to to get this another one of those lost except albums that you know don't quite make it to the the surface in their discography overall but uh it has a couple just really awesome songs on here one of my favorite songs by them which is dead on is off of this album so great addition there Uh, the Jimmy Castro Bunch. You see this one's on red vinyl as well. Um, again, just kind of some nice soul funk. I mean, for those that kind of know Jimmy Castro, he has a number of different albums out there. But uh, yeah, just, just uh, definitely just a nice, nice soul kind of funky, sometimes almost kind of some rock elements added in here or there. But uh, this is the Record Store Day pressing from the original 1972 release. So that was a great addition as well. And kind of a blind buy, but as soon as I saw the cover, I was like, I have to, I have to check this out. Uh, so I, I saw it in the store, it came in and some stuff that we had, and I was just like, uh, let me kind of throw it on. And it's so funny because on the front it says, includes the big hit Funky Street. So I was like, oh, okay, so I wonder what the, the big hit is. And I, I put it on, and the very first song is, you really know how to hurt a guy. And I mean, the first 30 seconds of that song, I was like, oh my gosh, done. That is mine. Just back to that wonderful, you know, mid to late 60s soul. Um, the song Funky Street is one of the least whatever songs in this album. So how, how that was the big hit, um, I have no idea. Because he has, there's like two, maybe three, I think two songs that are kind of more upbeat type of stuff. And then everything else is more of just a slow, you know, just kind of traditional mid late 60s soul. And really it's those two upbeat tracks he should throw off of this album, including the so-called hit. Because I mean, just the, the slow, slow jams that he did on this were just phenomenal. And again, the one you really know how to, how to hurt a guy. As soon as I heard that, I was like, man, he's got a new fan. So uh, Arthur Conley, that's a great new discovery for me in terms of an artist. I didn't, just didn't know much about him. 
completing the Dio studio album collection. So I finally picked up a copy of uh, Master of the Moon here, of one of the reissues. Another good one that I've been kind of waiting for, even though this one was close uh, from a condition standpoint, uh, Grace Jones, Slave to the Rhythm. It's just not an easy album to find. And even when you do find it, it's just normally not in great condition. So when I saw this one come in, it was kind of like, hey, I think it's good enough to hold me over. So I went ahead and grabbed it. Uh, actually, I mean, the vinyl is actually in very good shape. It's just the cover that had, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of a, a crease kind of right there. And on the back, there's a little bit of ring wear, you know, which, again, I know most people are like, wouldn't even notice that, who cares, and blah, blah, blah. But that's just kind of the standard that I've put on stuff that I bring into my collection since I did my purge about a year or two ago. But like I said, it's just as hard as it's been to find this on vinyl in decent condition. I, I couldn't pass this one up. But it's just just Grace doing her her Grace thing. You know, I talk about her all the time, just her creativity and uniqueness and just a fantastic artist. So that was definitely a, a great find. And, um, you know, we had a, a big country collection that came in uh, maybe three weeks ago or something like that. And it came in from a, a radio station, old country radio station that, that went out of business. So a lot of cool, unique stuff in there. I know Billy Hurst grabbed quite a few pieces. And as I've been going through it and pricing it, I've stumbled across a few that I've been wanting for a while. And one being a Dobie Gray. And this is from where I stand. Um, most people probably know Dobie from, uh, you know, he, he's the one that did um, um, Drift Away. You know, that's a very popular song um, that most people definitely know. Even if they don't know it was him that was singing it. But um, he has some other really great stuff, too. And one of my favorite songs that's almost just as nice as his version of Drift Away is his the song, uh, That's One to Grow On. Man, I mean, you, you talk about just this guy that does this perfect, this perfect mix of soul, pop, and country. He fits it all into that one song. And I mean, his voice is just kind of magical to me. So I've had the, had the greatest hit CD for a while. So to find this on vinyl and that, that stack was pretty awesome. And it's a, a white label promo there. And I stumbled across my, my girl here, Loretta. <clears throat> Love me some Loretta Lynn. That's a nice little shot in right there. You got like this, this, this. That's, <laughs> I guess that's how we roll, huh? Um, yeah, l l blah, blah. Loretta Lynn's Greatest Hits. This is volume two. Uh, of course, it has a song, you know, Coal Miner's Daughter, which is probably the first song that ever took me to Loretta Lynn uh, from the movie Coal Miner's Daughter. A um, number of other good tracks on there, too. One of the funny ones, though, that always catches me off of this, and I'm glad it was on this album, is the song Fist City that she actually she actually wrote herself. Uh, you know, there's always other people that did a lot of writing and someone just sings their song, but she actually wrote Fist City. And the thing that I find kind of funny about that is basically what Fist City is. It's about her talking to another woman about, uh, you know, better leave my man alone. Otherwise, you're going to end up, you know, meeting Fist, coming to Fist City, where she's not going to kick her ass, is what she was saying. But I mean, when you go through and listen to the lyrics on that song, I may be the first person to ever say this, but Loretta was kind of gangster in, in that song because she was talking so much trash about how she was going to kick this girl's butt. But one of my favorite lines, and I, I don't remember the exact line, but or how it went to the song, but she said something like, you know, my man would never pick up you because when he picks up trash, he only throws it in the garbage. <laughs> I was like, damn, Loretta. <laughs> and just, you know, just keeps talking about how she better stay away. I'm going to kick her ass. But uh, anyway, yeah, so... Loretta Gangster Lynn right there with uh, the greatest hits. <laughs> and then next, picked up this copy of Mickey Gilly Encore. 
and I mainly picked this up. Too. I've, I've always liked uh, Mickey's style. I, I think it's, um, you know, as much as it is kind of old school country, there is an element of soul that kind of floats, floats underneath what he does or a number of things that he does. But uh, on here, he does have the cover of Stand By Me, uh, which is probably my favorite song by him. I remember discovering that from watching the movie uh, Urban Cowboy, and I just thought that was a fantastic version. Um, but yeah, so Mickey Gilly Encore. And then the last piece here added to the country collection is my girl, Kitty Wells. And uh, it's country music time. You look at that album cover. I mean, come on. How can you not like Kitty? I don't know what it is about Kitty, man, but there's that old twangy type of country that she does. It just, I just freaking love it. I just, I just absolutely love it. That There's something about that old time country like this and a lot of uh, deep old time soul and blues music that uh, just the feel of the music takes me to a place where I guess I actually used to respect people like work, work ethic and just, um, you know, the taking of personal responsibility and just all those different elements like that stuff comes out and just like hits me in the face when I listen to old time country like this or old time soul or, you know, blues and, and that type of thing. It's just just something so real to me about those individuals in terms of what that music is saying. So uh, Kitty Wells, just for whatever reason, when I hear her do her thing, I, I, I get those vibes. So that is my recent updates. So that's the stuff that I kind of picked up. So yeah, as always, let me know what you think. I'm sure there's some stuff you probably like, some stuff you didn't, because definitely kind of bouncing all over the place, but that's how we typically roll on my channel. So uh, we'll talk to you soon, VC. All right, take care, guys.